Hi, so welcome to the part two of how to draw Pokemon. This is the color step. And so previously I've shown you how to do the line art. This is the finished product. Once this is done, um, you want to make several layers for different things. Now what I've done is I've made this basic template that I open up every time and I don't have to redo any of the layers. But I'll go through them. So I make here a background layer where I'll probably just paint it white. The splash is just some background texture. Sketch is if I do a sketch before the line art. You have your color. And then above it, you have a shade layer. The shade layer is set at 40% opacity. And the mode is multiply. And I use this with this type of gray color. The shade layer is clipped by pressing clipping group to the color layer. So anything I draw um, on the shade layer will only appear on whatever was already colored. So you won't go over the line art, you won't go over the background or anything like that. Then I make a second shade layer with the same settings on multiply 40% and clipped to color. But instead of using this gray, I use kind of a purple color. And this will be used for darker areas of the drawing. Then you have the highlight layer. Highlight layer I play around with. Um, usually it's at the mode is overlay and 28%, but that can go higher or lower depending on what color the Pokemon is. So if the base color of the Pokemon is very light, I might want to increase the opacity because it's harder to see any of the, the highlights. And then, I don't always use this, but you have a shine layer, little spots of white or little uh, shines that you want to do, the eyes, or if it's a really slippery, buggy, or watery Pokemon and you want to do um, film lines, then you can do that as well. Last layer I make is a texture layer. Um, this texture layer will actually be used in Photoshop, and that's just to give the overall Pokemon some some texture to make it like a nice skin. Okay, so let's begin. The tool that I use the most while coloring would be the Magic Wand tool. And if you haven't seen the previous video, this is Paint Tool Sai. I use it for the line art and coloring, and then I'll export the drawing in Photoshop for some ending or final touches. First thing I do is I take the Magic Wand tool on the line art layer so that everything I want to highlight will be from the line art. So I'm going to start with base color of the body. What I also do is, see there are little missing spots here? You can either use the magic wand tool to go in and click all the missing spots or in paint tool side you have something called a selection pen. This does the same thing. You can draw out any spot that you see that are white. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet. But you can do this with a pencil. Coloring uh, with a mouse, sorry. Coloring with a mouse is fine. To do the line art with a mouse is a bit tough, I'll have to admit. You don't need a Wacom um, Cintiq or anything, you can get a cheap Wacom, um, what are they called, like Intuos or Art stuff for like 60 or 70 bucks now. And those work really well. So once you zoom in, check everything is nice, I'm going to select a brush layer. Uh, this one I called Pencil, I don't know why, because this brush I think it's a bit more textury, yeah. Anyways. All right, you wanna go on your color layer and you want to choose a base color. Now for this guy, he's gonna be a type of blue. And with Pokemon, okay, a lot of the colors are not saturated, okay? Saturation would be going, if you look at the color wheel, saturated would be going to the right and then desaturating it would be going to the left. If 
desaturated is a word. So I'm going for something very, very pale, almost white, but still within the blue range. And then I start coloring. Now, obviously, if I don't like it, you can go back. You can reduce saturation. You can make it more blue. You can change the color, whatever you want, until you are happy with it. OK. Um, you know what? Make them just a shade more saturated. That's good. All right. Then if you press Control D, that removes the selection. OK, now go back to your line art layer, choose the magic wand, and choose another part you would like to color. I use control Z a lot, so just a little heads up. These will be the same as these, and the hands will be a bit different. Okay, so like before, take your selection brush, or selection pen they call it. Go in and fill the, the spots that the magic wand couldn't really reach. The reason the magic wand can't get all the spots is because of the type of line art brush that I used. So this line art brush is very um, inky. So there's lots of patterns within them. So the magic wand doesn't catch all the small ones. Here I might have to fix later too. All right, once selected, go back to your color layer choose your your brush and now just choose whatever color you want to use so I'm gonna go for a darker blue okay I like that now this color is a bit more saturated than the other one but it's fine because it's darker so if you've seen a lot of Pokemon official artwork You'll never find like a very light saturated color like this because that just looks neon. There's not, I don't even know if there's any neon color. Maybe there is, but I can't think of any right now. But the darker you go, it's fine to be a bit saturated in color. Okay, I think I like that. So Control D, unselect it. Then back to line art, and I'm going to redo this process and I'll speed this, uh, this part up. Okay, so once you've applied the base color and you're happy with the outcome, you're going to go into shading. Um, I think I'm going to change one more thing before. Let's see. I'm going to take the wand tool, go to color difference. What this does is it will select only the color which is really shitty actually so never mind oh sorry you have to be on the color layer to select the color there you go so if you choose the magic wand and you choose color difference it's going to choose the same color throughout okay so the reason i did this is i want to draw only on the lighter um, the lighter blue and what I want to do specifically is I want to color the ends of his gills or whatever you want to call these but 
don't want to do is start messing up here. Just be careful there. All right, then you can go back here, fix this part. You can even do that. If you right click, you're going to change the color that you're on. So if I right click this blue here, or right click here, it'll change. That's really, really useful. Especially if I want to like fix this up here. I do that. What I also like to do is the scroll bar. You can adjust your shortcuts so that increasing brush size or decreasing brush size matches a scroll bar or your, your mouse um, scrolling thingy. I don't know what it's called. Anyways, now I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shade. I'm going to choose this type of gray. And I'll start shading. Now, because the shade uh, layer is clipped to color, anything that I shade in the shade layer will only appear on the colored, um, the colored stuff. So even if I draw out here, it won't show anything that is already colored will show. So shading so far, nothing really special. You just want to remember where your light source is. So in my case, the light source is coming from here. It's going down here. So anything under will be shaded. A lot of this will be shaded. Pay attention to the anatomy as well. Anything further from the face or turned outwards like here will be shaded. Maybe you'll get some shade here. The eyes, depending on whether the eyes are outwards or inside, there will be a bit of shade. So this guy will have a bit of shade going there to depict a bit of depth. All right, once I have some basic shading, I'm going to go in and just erase the excess. Now you want to also erase.